There we go. Uh, share. Oh. I'm trying to stop it. There you go. Yahtzee. Okay. So, uh, first one, we're calculating depreciation. We know that the amount of our uh, the amount of our depreciation expense and allocation is going to be three hundred and fifty dollars. So we're going to put in the adjusting entry right now. Okay, uh, the date, let's say it's January 1st. There we go. Again, we want to mention the account that's being debited first. And in this case, we are showing the expense. So this is depreciation expense. Call this journal reference one. And we're debiting the expense by $350. We also have to show the allowance, or sorry, the, the accumulated amount of depreciation. So we, we credit um, accumulated depreciation. Okay, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. There we go. Again, same rules as the, uh, the previous journal. We indent the second account, and we credit the same amount. The description here would be to record uh, a month's worth of depreciation. So to record a month's worth of depreciation. There we go. And now we would move on to the next one. Um, Oh yeah, I had to put this one in this one. Uh, you forgot you took out a $10,000 bank loan at the beginning of the month. Uh, you must do, adjust your books for the bank loan and then show or accrue ten, uh, one month worth of interest. Okay, so the first, uh, the first entry we're going to put in here is just that bank loan itself, right, because we forgot to put it in. So let's say January 1st again, same day. It's been a bad day. We are going to debit cash because we now have $10,000 more cash. This will be journal two or entry two and by $10,000. One, ten, one, two, three. There we go. And then we would credit our bank loan by the same amount. And our entry here would be to, to record a new bank loan. So now that we've recorded the bank loan, which we forgot to do earlier. We now want to show one month worth of interest. So um, the annual interest rate is 10%. We grew a month's worth of interest. Okay. How we can do this is we the amount of interest you're going to pay in the year is the 10% of 10,000, right? So yearly interest. equals 10,000 multiplied by what? 10%? Yeah. Multiplied by 0 0.1 or 10%. Okay. If we do that, we get uh, what? 1,000? Uh, there we go. So that's for 12 months, right? So our monthly interest equals 1,000 divided by 12. And what do we get there? It is Sorry? 83. 83? You are good. I can't, I can't do that. So in a month, we're paying $83 worth of interest. If you were to take that $83 divided by, um, divided by 10,000, it would give you the effective monthly interest rate. But we don't talk about that here. So our adjusting entry here, 
um, is to show or uh, to show that we've incurred an interest expense. We, we have to pay some interest during this time. So again, the date is January 1st. There we go. Um, we're going to debit the expense first. So this would be interest expense. This would be three. It was $83. And then we're going to credit um, interest payable because we have not paid it yet, but we have incurred the expense. So interest payable by $83. And then our description would be something along the lines of to record a month's worth of interest. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far? Yes, sir. Sorry? Yeah. Based on this calculation, you find what you're paying uh, yearly in interest. You then uh, divide it by 12 months, and that gives you your month, uh, your month's worth of interest. Um, next, your, your ending food inventory was 80% of the original balance with no additional purchases. Calculate the cost of food sold and prepare the adjusting entry to reflect the current food inventory balance. So in this case, So our cost of food sold is our beginning inventory. Uh, there we go. Uh, plus our purchases minus our ending inventory. Okay. We know that there was zero purchases. Uh, our bank loan, uh, sorry, our, our ending inventory was 80% of the original and the original if we go to our financial worksheet our food inventory was 2500 so our beginning inventory say 2500 there we go we had zero purchases and our ending inventory was 85% or sorry 80% 80% of the original balance. So uh, minus 0 0.8 times 2,500. We do the math. This turns out to be 2,500 minus, can someone do 80%? Uh, sorry? 2,000? 2000? Minus 2,000. Means our cost of food sold, do that, was 500. We had our beginning balance of 2,500. We had zero purchases, and we had 80% of our inventory left over, which was $2,000 worth of inventory. So we take our beginning, add the purchases, in this case it's zero, and then we subtract our ending inventory, which was 2,000. So 2,500 minus 2,000 equals 500. That's the amount of food that we don't have anymore. So we have to show that we incurred that expense, and we also have to decrease our inventory by that amount because that we don't have that inventory, right? So the adjusting entry would be, let's we put it on January 1st again. We want to, that was really weird. We want to show that we've incurred the cost, which is our cost of food sold. Uh, $500, so that's the cost. And we want to reduce our food inventory 
buy the same amount. So 500 bucks. Um, the description I would I would give this one would be to record monthly cost of food sold. And then that one's done. Okay. Um, we're not going to do number four here because it, it's literally the exact same thing, uh, just with, with beverage. Okay, it's the same cost of food sold calculation, just different numbers. Okay. Um, we will, however, move on to this one. Okay, so if the last week in the accounting period um, you had a uh, thousand dollars worth of wages incurred but not paid, so basically, I've ever had people get paid pretty much a week after they work, essentially, right? We have to adjust our books to show that we've incurred that ten thousand, sorry, that thousand dollars worth of wages, and show that we have not paid it yet. Um, so what we would do here is go to, we'll call it January 1st as well. We're going to uh, show the expense. So this would be wage expense. Call this five. And it was $1,000. So one, there we go. We also have not paid this expense yet because it, they're going to be paid in the new, the new cycle. So it creates a payable account, which is wages payable for the same amount. <coughs> and the description I would give this one would be to, to record wages incurred but not paid. Because we've incurred the expense, but we have not paid them, and we will be paying them in a different accounting period. So now what we do with these, was it five items? If these are the only adjusting entries you have to do, then that's great. We take these adjusting entries, and we go to the ledger and change the balances. So the balances on the ledger accurately reflect these adjustments. So the first one here was depreciation expense. So we go to our general ledger. We find depreciation expense. Dave, did you go to the ledger with the expense? Which probably depreciation expense. There we go. So this was January 1st. To record monthly depreciation. Uh, which one was this? This was reference one. And we were debiting it, right? And how much was it? It was 350. There we go. So we're debiting it at 350. There we go. Um, we know that we're not actually going to be making any more changes to this account, so we can put the balance in at 350 as well. Okay. Uh, you can also go to your financial statement worksheet and find your depreciation expense. Oh, thank you. Uh, and put that under the adjustments, and it was a debit, right? So 350. Okay. We then go back to the journal. We want to. I spelled depreciated wrong here. Uh, we want to put 350 into the accumulated depreciation. So we go to the ledger. In this case, it says accumulated depreciation truck. We'll just call it equipment, whatever. Uh, so January 1st. In fact, I'll just even change the name so it's not confusing. There we go. Um, to record monthly depreciation, the reference was one, and we credited 350. So now it's posted to the ledger. We know that uh, based on our adjustments, there's going to be no more changes to this account. We can just take the balance right now of 350. So we go back to our worksheet here. Find our accumulated depreciation, wherever it might be. If it's on there, I hope. It is not, so I'm just going to put it in quickly. There we go, and it was credited 350. 
Um, going back to our journal here, these are done, right? So we can move on to the next one. Uh, we have our cash right here. We are debiting cash by 10,000. So we go to our ledger. Cash, this was January 1st. Uh, the description was to uh, a bank, new bank loan. Oop, I want to show it underneath that actually. To record new bank loan. This was uh, adjustment reference two, and we were debiting by uh, 10,000. Perfect. Awesome. Now that's done. Yes? I just want to confirm. So adjustments would be below the bottom line. Like you've already calculated that. Sentence. Yeah, absolutely. So then we go to, we can retake this balance because I don't think anything else we did affects cash. So what we would do, because it had a debit balance, we would just add it to our debit balance. Our new balance is uh, 89,560. So we go over here to our financial statement worksheet, go up to cash, and we are increasing it by 10,000. One, two, three. Go to our ledger, do the next line. Our bank loan is increasing by, uh, by 10,000. So we go to our ledger, Find our bank loan. Uh, where are you? Right here. January 1st. There we go. To record new loan. This was reference uh, two, right? And it was a credit for 10,000. There we go. Uh, we can take the balance right now because there's no other uh, changes to this particular account. One, two, three, there we go. We can just transfer that change to the worksheet here. Where is our bank loan? Right there. So it was a credit of 10,000. There we go. Uh, next one. So we've done all this. Now we can move on to our interest expense and our interest payable. $83. So where's our interest? Maybe it's down. Oh, it's not here, so we're going to have to put it in. Um, if you're ever missing an account in the ledger, you have extra accounts, you just put in the name. So in this case, interest expense and our interest payable there we go so again the date was january 1st to record monthly interest reference was three i believe and the amount of our interest was debited for 83 dollars so because i know we know that no other transaction or adjusting entry is going to affect this account we can just take the balance right now at 83 dollars um, our interest payable, same thing, Gen January 1st, the description to record monthly uh, interest, reference was three, and it was a credit of $83, and because we know no other transaction, or sorry, adjusting entries going to affect this, we just take the balance again. There we go. Now we go to our financial worksheet, find interest and interest expense. Sorry, interest payable and interest expense. There's our interest expense. And I'm going to change this to interest payable. There we go. So our interest payable went up by 83. And our interest expense is also 83. There we go. Go back to our journal here. We have two left. We have our cost of food sold and our food inventory. So we're, we're adjusting the, our food inventory and showing the expense. So we go to our ledger. Go find um, our 
I guess we lumped everything into inventory here. So on um, uh, January 1st, you would show this on your worksheets. You'll have individual food and beverage accounts. And here is all lumped into inventory. June 1st, uh, to record cost of food sold. This was number four. And it was credited for how much was it, 500? So if we take the debit balance minus the adjusted credit, we get a new balance of 2700 So we go to our financial worksheet. We find our food inventory. In this case, it was 25 We credited it by 500 There we go. We then go back to our adjustment journal. What's the next one? Cost of food sold. Define our cost of food sold first. Let's put it in. Cost of food sold. There we go. On January 1st, to record cost of food sold, the reference was three or four? Was four. Um, we uh, credit or no, sorry, debit five hundred dollars because it's the expense. There we go. And because we know nothing else is going to affect this account, we just take the balance straight up. Then we go find our cost of food sold. You guys are quick. There we go. It was how much was it? Sorry, the the transaction. 500. 500. There we go. And then we go to our last uh, adjusting entry is the wages payable and wages expense for 1,000. So we go to our uh, find our wage expense and wages payable. Wage expense and wage payable on this January 1st. Description to record wages incurred but not paid. Oops. There we go. Uh, reference was five. Uh, this was a payable, so it, how much was it? Was a thousand? There we go. And because I know nothing else is going to affect this account, I'll just take up the balance right now. And then same thing with our wages expense, January 1 to, I'm just going to copy and paste the description. Or not. There we go. Same reference number, and we debit because it's an expense. And we can take the balance because we know nothing else is going to affect it. So now we can post all these to our adjustments for here. Uh, where is it? Wages expense. We debited it by a thousand. There we go. And wages payable. Yes, sir. Uh, for another thousand. There we go. Now we want to make sure that. Um, both the left and right hand column are are they balance? Because if the adjust adjustments don't balance, then uh, we've done something wrong. Okay, in this case they do balance. So now what we can do is retake the trial balance. If the original trial balance, um, if the account doesn't have any adjustments in the next two columns, you just post the original balance over. For example. Um, we have a debit balance over here for cash. Um, and you are, there's an adjustment that debits it, uh, debits the account by uh, 10,000. So we know it's increasing. So we add the two. So 79,000 plus 10,000 to get the new balance of uh, $89,560. Next, our food inventory had a normal balance of 
uh, a debit and it has a credit um, a credit adjustment. So we subtract the credit adjustment. There was no changes to our liquor inventory, so we just keep it like that. There was no adjustments to our furniture. There was also no adjustment to, oh, there wasn't a, there was no adjustment to our furniture, or sorry, our equipment, but there was to our depreciation. Oh, why am I doing that? Yeah, we're good. Uh, there was no glassware. Utilities, no change to that either. Go all the way down to common stock, which has a credit balance. There was no change to that. There we go. Uh, our rent expense did not need to be adjusted, but our wage expense did. Because they're both debits, we add them together. There we go. Next, our supplies expense did not change. Our depreciation expense uh, had a zero balance and now is increased by 350, so we give it a credit balance of 350. We had zero income tax. Uh, we had no cost of food originally, but it has been adjusted for a debit balance. Oops, sorry, I put the 350 in the wrong column here. There we go. And the $500 we keep. The interest payable increased by $83, and it did not have an original balance, so we uh, put that as a new balance on the credit side. Our food sales had a credit balance, and there was no adjusting entry, so we keep it the same. Our accumulated depreciation had zero opening balance, but we have adjusted it. So we keep it as the uh, credit balance of 350. And then all the other items right here did not have an original balance, but they have been adjusted. So we just keep them at their adjusted balance. For example, $1,000 for wages payable, $10,000 for our bank loan, and then $83 for our interest expense, uh, 83. And then I just have to make sure that the, the addition is correct here. There we go. So we've adjusted the trial balance and it now balances, which is good. You want that to work. Um, what you could do, one way to, if it didn't balance, again, take the difference between the two sides and go hunting with the control F. Or if it doesn't balance here, Go back to your uh, ledger and just make sure that some of the, the math is right between um, taking the adjustments off of the account. And you had a question, sir. Um, all the way to the top? Yep. So let's just say um, there's some accident that, that caused me the cash. Like we were losing the money, the losing the money that is bigger, like more than uh, the cash we have yep. in the original. So how do you show that? Um, <coughs> a negative number? Yeah, no, you won't have ever have a negative negative cash number. We'll oh. show you that tomorrow because uh, we'll show you where this come from. Technically, all the accounts on an income statement they're temporary accounts, right? At the end of the accounting period, what we do is we close all of our expense and revenue account to an account called income summary. We then take the balance of our income summary, and that is either technically your profit or your loss. If it is a loss, it is, uh, what is it, credited to cash, okay? Um, if uh, it's more than the cash, then I have a bank loan. Or you have to go and find more financing. You can't have negative cash. You can't can't spend money you don't pay. Yeah. I would also create uh, what we call negative retained earnings, so it, it draws from the equity as well. Like it it has an effect on equity, which we'll show you tomorrow. But good question. And then there, what we're, what you can do, but we're not going to do today, is post 
those balances on your adjusted trial balance to either the income statement column or the balance sheet column. Once you do that, that's kind of like an impromptu income, uh, income statement and balance sheet. Okay. Um, well, I can do this pretty quickly, actually. So we'll, we'll include this here. Um, your food inventory, liquor inventory, furniture, equipment, and not utilities, these first ones right here are assets. So we would post them to the debit side of the balance sheet. Okay, whoa. Maybe I posted the one numbers. There we go. Uh, accounts received, sorry, uh, utilities. That is uh, utilities expense, I'm assuming. So we would post that to our income statement. There we go. Moving down the list. Common stock, where would your common stock show up? An income statement or a balance sheet? It would show up on your balance sheet because it's equity. Uh, common stock, it was credit of 100000 There we go. Uh, next, your rent expense, wage expense, supplies expense, uh, depreciation expense, and cost of food sold. All three of those are technically, uh, sorry, all four or five of those are expenses. Where would those show up? Your income statement or your, your income statement? Exactly. So put that right here. There we go. Sorry? Um, did I miss sales somewhere? No, we we're good. Uh, interest payable, that is a liability, so it would show up on our balance sheet. That was a credit, so 83. There we go. Food sales, because we have uh, uh, its revenue, right? So it would show up on which? Re Income statement. So 6,000, one, two, three. There we go. Accumulated depreciation, contra asset account. So it, it would show up on a balance sheet. And that had credit, so 350. And then our uh, wages payable, that is a. Um, It is goes on the balance sheet, yes, because it's elevated. There we go. Uh, bank loan, also a liability, goes on the balance sheet. There we go. And interest expense of $83 goes on the income statement, right? Because it's a cost. So $83, there we go. I just want to make these bigger. There we go. Let's look and drag that over. There we go. So, um, well, first of all, our balance sheet doesn't balance. <laughs> so if we take the big side, subtract the small side, we can normally find where the error is. Bum, bum, bum. Expense, expense, expense. Expense, expense, common stock, 700. Ah, there's part right there. See what I did? Oh, no, that's right. Uh, there we go. Sorry? No, because I decreased it by 500, right? Uh, 10,000. 83, scared me. Uh, this was interest payable. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, so right here, that's between, uh, it starts off with the income statement. So right here is our debit column. We then subtract the this one here. So you take the bigger one, subtract the smaller one. See that $5,673? That would normally be a profit. However, in this case, because our costs, which are the debit side, exceed our revenue on the right-hand side of the, the credit column, technically we have a debit balance 
of a of $5,673, which is uh, a loss. So we now put that over here in our um, on our income summary account, which I deleted to make to make uh, room for another. So this is our income summary of five six seven three or a loss. If we include that on the debit side, we match or we balance. But we'll get more into that tomorrow. The difference between the reason why we didn't balance on the balance sheet is because we did not transfer over our um, our uh, profit or loss, which turns into retained earnings at the end of the cycle, which is also an equity account. Retained earnings is just a, a rolling amount of profit. Yes. Why the expense? Because income statements represent uh, profit or loss, right? It's, it's performance, financial performance, and how we calculate profit is sales minus expenses. Expenses are costs. Does that help? So expenses is cost. So I think it should be on the balance. No, nope, it should be on the income statement. Yeah, I believe it's an equity. So balance sheet is assets, liabilities, equity. Income statements are revenue and expenses. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to break. Uh, let's be back at uh, 11.30, please. So you got about minutes. Sorry, that's not a terribly long break, but I do want...